perhaps China has a sherbet lemon economy. Like the boiled sweet, China's landing may be soft in the middle, but hard on the outside. There's little doubt about how hard it is on the outside. Just ask suppliers to the country. Brazil's rials down a quarter against the dollar this year, while the Australian dollars tumbled 12%. Both of them have been hammered by weaker Chinese demand for their commodity exports, which translated into sharply lower prices. The question is whether China's landing is soft in the middle. Stephen Jen of hedge fund SLJ Macro thinks urban job creation shows that China's having a domestic soft landing as it switches from infrastructure and export-driven industrial growth which had sucked in commodities towards the service sector and consumption instead. The old economy is definitely struggling as the country's more reliable measures such as electricity consumption and rail freight demonstrate. As with so much else in China though, Labour market data is dubious at best. The official urban unemployment rates vary between 4% and 4.3% since 2004, which is deeply, deeply suspicious. The service sector, unfortunately, is not well measured, so it's hard to come to any really solid conclusions as to whether this is right or not. Now, on Tuesday, China cut interest rates and made it easier for banks to lend, which could be seen as another sign of official concern about the state of the economy. Equally, easier money implies further devaluation of the renminbi, and sure enough, the currency fell to its lowest since August 2011. Now, the easing came after the close of yet another awful day for Chinese stock markets, with Shanghai Composite down 7.6%. That's the blue line here, and uh, Shenzhen is here in red behind. That's the other major index. More than 1810 of the Shanghai listed companies were down by the daily maximum of 10%, although that's slightly better than yesterday when it was 9 in 10. Now, a fortnight ago, China's devaluation as part of the liberalisation of the currency was taken very badly by international investors. And this week's carnage in global equities followed Monday's crash in Chinese shares. Today, though, investors saw things quite differently. Commodities are up, FTSE 100's up by 2.5%, Eurozone shares are up 4%, and the US rally from its low yesterday has continued, with the S&P 500 up to 2% or so at the moment. You can see the S&P 500 here in blue for the past three days, the gaps, of course, being when the market's closed, uh, and uh, against that, the Eurozone uh, shares in red, and both of them are in their local currency. So. Uh, the fall in the sorry the rise in the euro uh, yesterday made shares fall further in euro terms in Europe. Equally, today's recovery with the in, in shares looks better in euros because the euro has fallen against the dollar. Now there are three possible explanations here. First is the simplistic notion that at least China is doing something to fix its economy, which is better than doing nothing and easy money might stop its stock bubble from deflating so disastrously as well. Second uh, interpretation is that China's central bank is perfectly capable of avoiding the impossible trinity that policymakers face. It remains true that when there are few capital controls, a cut in interest rates ought to mean a weaker currency. But even with China's substantially relaxed current, uh, capital controls, it has such large foreign exchange reserves that it can smooth out the decline of the renminbi, or even keep it completely stable for a very long time whilst easing monetary policy, just using up some of those reserves in the process. But personally, I favour a third explanation. What's been going on is all about sentiment. Developed markets were overstretched and had been ignoring China's boom and bust all year. So a fortnight ago, the devaluation reminded investors that there was a big risk that they weren't properly factoring in. That was scary. The fall yesterday hurt because it came as traders were already jittery after Friday's tumble in US stocks. You can see S&P 500 down a fair bit on Friday, and of course then opened down a huge amount yesterday uh, before the rebound. Now, the unwinding of leveraged trades began to feed on itself, and that's one of the reasons you had such a drastic reaction uh, in Europe and also in the US uh, yesterday. But sentiment then became so negative, and markets very 
uh, heavily oversold on quite a few different technical measures, but investors were ready to see the good side of almost anything, especially when it involves a central bank coming up with more cash. That's something that markets have come to love over the last few years. As to whether the Chinese monetary policy will actually act as a sweetener for its economy or um, go the way of the uh, failed stimulus policies that Japan and Europe have had over recent years, well, investors will just have to suck it and see.